On July 1, 2025, astronomers spotted just the third confirmed interstellar object in history, 3i Atlas. NASA insists it is just a comet, but the numbers tell a stranger story, a perfectly timed arrival, a near-perfect orbit, an odd said to be 1 in 100,000. If you think the official explanation settles anything, you are in for revelations that upend everything we have been told. So what are we really seeing? Cosmic coincidence or cosmic cover-up? Atlas, the asteroid. Terrestrial impact. Last alert system flagged a moving object on July 1, 2025 from its survey telescope in Chile. The detection came in as a routine alert, but the follow-up data told a different story. This object was not just another comet. Its measured speed, about 68 kilometers per second, was far too fast for anything bound to our sun. Astronomers tracked its arc across the sky and calculated its path using the Minor Planet Center's astrometric data. Every solution pointed to the same conclusion, the object's orbit was hyperbolic, with an eccentricity greater than one. It had entered the solar system from deep space and it would never return. This wasn't a first. In 2017, Oumuamua arrived, then 2 I Borisov in 2019, but both carried their own mysteries. Now, with 3 I Atlas, astronomers had the third confirmed interstellar visitor in recorded history. The official label, 3 I Atlas, stood for the third interstellar object discovered by the Atlas survey. Its trajectory and velocity were logged, checked, and double-checked by teams worldwide. The data was clear, this was an outsider, not a leftover from our own solar system's formation. The Atlas team's discovery was more than just another blip in the sky. Interstellar objects are so rare that each one reshapes what scientists think they know about the cosmos. For 3i Atlas, the numbers alone set it apart, promising a story that would challenge the boundaries of chance and coincidence. Backward dynamical models do not just trace where 3i Atlas is going, they also reveal when it arrived. By feeding the object's precise position and velocity into orbital simulations, astronomers can rewind its journey through space. The result is striking. Every credible integration points to an entry date centered around 8,000 years before present, give or take a few centuries. This is not just a number pulled from thin air. These calculations factor in the gravitational pull of the major planets, the subtle tug of the galactic disk, and even possible non-gravitational forces from outgassing. The uncertainty band, usually a few hundred to a thousand years wide, does not erase the coincidence, it sharpens it. Roughly 8,000 years ago, the first cities began to rise in Mesopotamia. Written records, monumental architecture, and organized societies appeared in scattered pockets across the globe. Human history, as we know it, was just beginning to be documented. At that same epoch, according to the best orbital reconstructions, this interstellar object crossed the boundary into the solar system. No other known visitor from the stars has an entry time that lines up so closely with the dawn of civilization. For some, this is just a curious overlap. For others, it is the first in a growing list of numbers that do not feel random. The arrival of three Atlas, so precisely timed with humanity's leap into recorded history, raises a question that cannot be brushed aside so easily. Are we looking at a cosmic accident or the first sign of a pattern? A growing list of features sets 3i Atlas apart from any ordinary comet. Four stand out, its orbit, its path through the solar system, its chemical makeup, and its sheer size. The orbit has an inclination of just about five degrees off the plane where the major planets lie, a tight alignment that is rare for a visitor from deep space. Its journey threads past Mars, then Venus, then Earth, in that order. For something arriving from the void, this sequence is more than a lucky shot. It reads like a survey of the inner planets. The chemical readings add another wrinkle. Water and carbon dioxide are both present, but the ratio between them is off the charts compared to most comets. That is not just a curiosity, it is a fingerprint that does not match the usual suspects. And the nucleus itself is massive. Estimates put it at two to three and a half miles wide, making it one of the largest interstellar objects ever seen passing through. 
A prominent Harvard astrophysicist runs the numbers and concludes the ODDS of all these traits lining up by chance are about 1 in 100,000. This is not just a single oddity, it is a cluster of anomalies, each stacking the deck further away from randomness. The question grows sharper, are we seeing a cosmic accident or signs of deliberate design? The only way to test that is to keep watching. Every new observation either chips away at coincidence or adds to the pattern. On October 29, 2025, 3i Atlas reached its closest point to the Sun, perihelion, at a distance of about 130 million miles. As the object entered its most active and unpredictable phase, Earth found itself in the worst possible spot for observation. The Sun stood directly between us and the visitor, blocking every ground-based telescope and most space-based cameras. For nearly three weeks, the entire planet was effectively blind to the main event. Mars, on the other hand, was perfectly positioned. While Earth hid behind the Sun, Mars moved along its orbit to a vantage point almost 90 degrees away. From there, every major Mars orbiter had a clear, uninterrupted line of sight to 3i Atlas. The Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, equipped with the High Rise Camera, was authorized to capture high-resolution images starting October 2, 2025, when the comet was about 19 million miles from the Red Planet. China's Tianwen-1 Orbiter also took aim, adding another set of eyes from Mars orbit. Even the Perseverance rover, parked on the surface, had a chance to record distant glimpses of the visitor. This geometry created an unusual bottleneck. All the best data would come not from Earth, but from a fleet of robotic observers orbiting or roving on Mars. The most dramatic outbursts, the jets, and possible fragmentation would unfold during the weeks when Earth's view was blocked by solar glare. Meanwhile, Mars-based instruments were positioned to catch every detail. It was as if the solar system's own layout had conspired to route the show past our instruments and into the hands of a handful of spacecraft on another world. This was not a minor inconvenience. For astronomers, the perihelion window is often when comets reveal their secrets, shedding mass, erupting in jets, or even breaking apart. With Earth sidelined, the only hope for high-resolution, real-time data rested with the Mars orbiters and their ability to capture, process, and eventually transmit what they saw. The timing and alignment left many scientists frustrated and raised sharp questions about how much of the comet's true nature would remain hidden by the simple accident of planetary orbits. On October 1, 2025, a government shutdown swept across federal agencies, freezing NASA public communications at the worst possible moment. Freezing was the policy, and it arrived fast. Policy dictated a strict blackout, no new data releases, no press briefings, no updates from mission teams. For six weeks, NASA remained silent, even as Mars-based spacecraft were collecting the most sought-after images of 3i Atlas in history. Requests for information were met with stock replies, operations paused, updates postponed, no comment until further notice. The timing left a vacuum. Astronomers, journalists, and the public watched as the perihelion window passed with no word from the people controlling the best eyes in the solar system. Vacuum describes the feeling. Behind the scenes, congressional inboxes filled with demands for answers. Representative Anna Paulina Luna, a member of the House Science Committee, took her case to social media and the press. On October 19, 2025, she issued a direct public statement. NASA must release the Mars Orbiter images of 3i Atlas, shut down or not. Her office cited the scientific urgency and the public's right to see what taxpayer-funded spacecraft had recorded. Committee records show Luna staff pressed NASA leadership for an exception, arguing that critical scientific data should not be subject to the same embargo as routine administrative work. NASA response was unwavering. Citing legal counsel, the agency maintained that all external communications, including image releases from Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, MAVEN, and Perseverance, were suspended by law until the shutdown ended. Internal emails later released through FOIA requests reveal a split among NASA staff. Some scientists argued for a workaround, 
warning that a prolonged blackout would erode public trust and fuel speculation about what the agency might be hiding. Others insisted that violating the freeze would set a dangerous precedent and risk legal and political fallout. Split captures that tension. As the days dragged on, amateur astronomers picked up the slack. Backyard telescopes and small observatories tracked 3 i atlas from Earth, logging every flicker and tail twist they could see. Their findings included fragmentation, sudden brightness spikes, and strange jets, and they spread quickly through online forums, often outpacing anything the official channels had released before the freeze. With each new amateur report, the sense of disconnect grew sharper. NASA silence, once a matter of policy, became a source of growing public suspicion. The crucial weeks passed with the agency locked behind a wall of bureaucracy, while the world waited for answers that never came. The days around October 29th brought a display that left even seasoned astronomers searching for explanations. As 3i Atlas swung past the sun, its brightness did not just tick upward, it exploded. Photometric records from amateur and professional observatories tracked a surge of nearly 100 times invisible light, peaking within a three-day window. The light curve, normally a smooth rise and fall for most comets, shot up by almost five magnitudes. This was not a subtle outburst. It was the kind of event that, by the numbers, should have torn the nucleus apart. Yet telescopes did not record a single bright spot. In the wake of this outburst, images from Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, Stereo, and a swarm of backyard telescopes revealed a nucleus surrounded by up to 16 smaller fragments. For several days, these condensations drifted alongside the main body, trailing faint persistent jets. Loeb's calculations suggested that, to produce such a spike in brightness, 3i Atlas would have needed to shed 13% of its total mass in a matter of days. In standard comet physics, that much mass loss almost always spells destruction. But by early November, the main nucleus was still intact, still outgassing, still moving on its interstellar path. The jets themselves stretched belief as much as distance. The anti-sunward jet, what most would call the main tail, extended nearly 1.8 million miles into space, traced in detail by stereo and Mars-based cameras. Even more puzzling, a sunward jet, or anti-tail, reached 620,000 miles, remaining sharply collimated for over a week. Both jets held a narrow opening angle, less than 3 degrees, and showed little sign of dispersal despite the violence of the outburst. For comet specialists, such symmetry and longevity are rare bordering on unprecedented. Radio telescopes in South Africa added another layer to the puzzle on October 24th, detecting a strong hydroxyl emission signature, clear evidence of water outgassing. But the chemistry did not fit the usual script. The ratio of carbon dioxide to water was far higher than in typical solar system comets, echoing early infrared readings from JWST. Official explanations pointed to the diversity of interstellar chemistry, but the timing was hard to ignore. After weeks of bizarre activity, 3i Atlas suddenly began behaving more like a textbook comet, just as Earth's view was returning. The data, stacked together, refused to settle into a simple story. A comet that brightens by 100-fold, fragments but does not die, throws off jets measured in millions of miles, and then settles into normalcy. Each observation fits the comet label, yet the combination strains the limits of coincidence. The numbers themselves became the main characters, each measurement a new challenge to what should have been a straightforward case. On November 19, 2025, NASA gathered the press in Greenbelt, Maryland, ending six weeks of silence. Nicola Fox, head of NASA's Science Mission Directorate, stepped to the podium and delivered a clear verdict. It is a comet. It looks like a comet, it behaves like a comet. The line landed with the weight of finality. The images on display were underwhelming, hazy, low-resolution shots from Hubble, JWST, Psyche, and Mars orbiters. Each frame showed a fuzzy white ball surrounded by a cloud of light, none offering the sharp detail many had hoped for. Fox pointed to the evidence. Water and carbon dioxide were detected in the coma, a dust tail stretched millions of miles, and the light curve matched what NASA described as active but typical comet behavior. 
The agency acknowledged oddities, including an unusually high ratio of carbon dioxide to water and an origin in the galactic disk. Those points are rare, the agency said, but not outside the realm of natural possibility. In their view, these features fit within the broad spectrum of comet behavior seen before. As questions turn to missing high-resolution images from Mars-based spacecraft, NASA's answers stayed tight. Legal constraints from the recent government shutdown were cited, and officials promised that more data would be released in time. The message to the public was direct. Case closed, the science is settled, and the story of 3i Atlas is one of cosmic happenstance, not engineered intent. For critics and independent observers, however, the briefing left a sense of unfinished business. Answers were given, but the data gaps remained. Twelve major NASA missions and several international spacecraft turned their cameras toward 3i Atlas. The official list includes Hubble, the James Webb Space Telescope, SphereX, SWIFT, TESS, Perseverance, Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, MAVEN, Psyche, Lucy, Stereo, and SOHO. China's Tianwen-1 orbiter and ground-based networks in South Africa and Chile contributed their own data sets. Each asset recorded images or spectra during the crucial months, some at distances as close as 19 million miles, others from hundreds of millions of miles away. Every mission generated raw frames, exposure logs, and metadata, all catalogued in mission archives. But when NASA presented its findings, the public saw only a handful of processed images, downsampled composites, or stacked summaries. The high-resolution raw frames from HiRISE and MAVEN, the original Perseverance exposures, even the full sequence from Tianwen-1, were missing from public release. Instrument logs show more than 10 high-rise frames were captured, and MAVEN's ultraviolet spectrograph produced at least a dozen exposures. Psyche's September flyby yielded four broadband images, but only stacked versions were displayed. For Lucy, only a composite was shown. The underlying frames and exposure times remain unpublished. Even the ground-based Atlas Survey's FITS files are only partially available. The gap is not a matter of speculation. NASA's own press briefings and event logs confirm the existence of unreleased data, especially from October and early November, when 3i Atlas was at its most active and Earth was out of view. Congressional records and FOIA filings document ongoing requests for these missing datasets. As of late November, less than one-third of all acquired images and spectra are available for public download in raw form. With the object's closest Earth approach, 170 million miles, set for December 29, 2025, the clock is ticking. The final window to capture and release definitive data is closing fast. For those seeking answers, the list of withheld files is as important as the images already shown. Each unreleased dataset represents a chance to resolve the lingering questions or leave them open as the comet races back into deep space. Today, the official record on 3i Atlas remains incomplete, despite 12 spacecraft and dozens of telescopes capturing data the public may never see. In an era defined by both unprecedented discovery and deepening distrust, every unanswered anomaly chips away at our confidence. When the truth is filtered, curiosity becomes the last defense against complacency. The real question is who decides what counts as an answer? Share your thoughts below.